Long before gaming was accepted as a worthwhile way to spend your time, it was only thought of as being for social outcasts, a hidden hobby enjoyed in mom's basements around the world. That was the way gaming was viewed before the Call of Duty and Wii boom of the late 2000s, and today gaming is one of the most lucrative industries in the world. No longer are video games solely male-targeted boob fests custom built to attract horny on main teenagers, instead with mainstream acceptance comes the smoothing over of a whole bunch of challenging subject matter. However, as someone who grew up with this stuff and saw the changing of tastes and the industry's image over time, it's damn fun to look back at the time some of gaming's most ridiculous titles and moments caught us completely off guard. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 video games you had to hide from your parents. Number 10, Dead Rising. Although Dead Rising 4 would make the series end on a bum note, the original was one of many titles that helped the Xbox 360 dominate the seventh generation. Like some of the most beloved B-movies, the tone throughout veers pretty severely down the shock value gore route, only to bounce back into over-the-top fun. Case in point, Adam the Clown. Showing that Capcom could still deliver gortastic thrills when it came to grossing us all out, your showdown with this sadistic chainsaw juggling clown comes to a grisly end when he ends up stomach first on two still whirring chainsaws. As the blades eat through his chest cavity, he bursts into a pretty maniacal laugh, which being he seems to be enjoying his own death is just downright horrifying, so much so that even hero Frank has to cover his mouth in disgust. Gore in games is nothing new, but this incredibly disturbing scene stands out in a game that, until this point, had been full of decapitations and dismemberments. I'm including it though because my dad walked into my room when I was playing this, and I had literally no way to explain what was on screen. Number 9, Tomb Raider Lara's evolution from triangle-chested sex icon to endurance-tested survivor is one of gaming's greatest barometers for the portrayal of females over the years. Still, before she ventured to the island of Yamatai in 2013, Lara's exaggerated figure held a place in both teenage boys' minds and that of their overly sensitive parents for completely different reasons. Back in the PS1 days, there was a huge difference between the Lara rendered on the box art, posters, and adverts, i.e. someone who didn't look like they were made of Lego, and that of in-game, meaning her suggestive noises, poses, and dialogue left you as something of a laughingstock should anybody walk in. It didn't help that her sound bites and dialogue were overly sexualized either, meaning that if you were a kid whose parents insisted on checking out what you were playing, all of you were then subjected to a bunch of sexual grunt climbing noises. <laughs> <sighs> Thankfully, Lara's rough-and-tumble character design was badass to the core, and despite many pointing the finger and stating nothing good came out of that original portrayal, Miss Croft herself is a firm favorite amongst a ton of female gamers too. Number 8, Gears of War now, granted, Gears doesn't have a particularly on-the-nose violent scene, but after the chainsaw gun delights of the original were so well-received, gore and fatality-style executions became a signature trait. Also, yeah, the iconic weapon of Gears of War was a frickin' chainsaw attached to the bottom of a machine gun. Gears of War 2 then introduced the phenomenal idea of finishing downed foes in a number of satisfyingly violent ways, ranging from ramming said chainsaw into their stomachs, punching heads into a fine goo, using your shotgun as a head-popping golf club, or just demolishing an entire face with your boot. The sound design was top-notch too, with every squelch, pop, and limb sever sounding like a whole bag of wet lettuce being slapped off the wall. For any already squeamish parents, there wasn't a whole lot for them to take away outside of watching their little darlings get completely wide-eyed at the prospect of bashing more skulls in. And as you'll see in any Video Games Are The Devil style news report, Gears frequently made an appearance precisely because of all this stuff. Number 7, Grand Theft Auto 3 Answers down in the comments, were you one of those people who managed to convince your parents to get a copy of GTA while you were still underage, or did you lend it from a friend, secretly indulging in Rockstar's masterpiece from within your own walls? Because it's quite easy to forget GTA's humble beginnings as an awkward top-down 2D driver shooter hybrid that most of us rarely indulged in for longer than a couple of hours. One of the most successful titles to benefit from the jump to 3D graphics overall though, GTA was already a household name, but it was GTA 3 that revolutionized the gaming industry and game design overall. Part of the reason the mass media pitchfork brigade didn't arrive on Rockstar's doorstep in the early days was right down to the fact that the violence and depravity on display was relegated to little pixelated men thwacking each other with rectangular bullets. 
However, as soon as you could bludgeon a prostitute to death in three dimensions, well, then we had a cultural turning point on our hands. Number 6, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. Now, you may be questioning Snake Eater's position on this list, but have you recently gone back to the art direction Hideo Kojima decided to go with when designing Eva and the boss? Yes, they're fighting for their lives behind enemy lines, but with a hell of a lot of cleavage on show. Because video games. Sure, us horny ass dogs weren't complaining at the time, lads, 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 but it is pretty damn funny looking back on characters like these and suddenly happening upon the same train of thought our parents must have had. There is always the golden rule of never skipping a cutscene in a game too, let alone Metal Gear Solid. So when it came time for any of these super embarrassing scenes, which exist in literally all of Hideo Kojima's games, did you attempt to pause and risk skipping, actively skip with intent, or just sit there watching these characters get their seduction on? Number 5, Saints Row. Try explaining the latter Saints Row games to anyone, let alone parents, and chances are you'll get a few confused looks. Not only in Saints 3 could you tweak the character creation sliders to play as a shiny, purple-skinned, super-powered sex hulk, but in Saints Row 4 your character randomly becomes the President of the United States, whilst also being a shiny, purple-skinned, super-powered sex hulk. As you do. This newer direction for the series reared its head in Saints 2, and at any point in gameplay, if someone looked at the screen, they'd see any number of things ranging from kicking a house in feces, delivering a flying dropkick to a grandmother, or Stone Cold stunnering a laser gun wielding alien before defeating another alien with a dildo. All within a few minutes. Number 4, Mortal Kombat. Few games managed to stir up controversy quite like Mortal Kombat, and even as we look to the future and wonder if next-gen hardware will ever mean fatalities get that little bit too real, you can't deny just how much fun the series has had because of it. Still, the defining reason why games like Mortal Kombat have become culturally renowned and other built-to-shock titles like Postal have been completely buried is down to good old-fashioned solid gameplay. Even in its weaker installments, MK has always been instantly playable due to a very tight fighting system, a cavalcade of memorable and lovable characters, and of course, all those signature fatalities. Mortal Kombat 9 turned heads with Kung Lao and Noob Cybot's finishers, tipping the scales towards more stomach-churning levels of gore. And then MK11's skin-peeling Garrus fatality was even worse. Depending on how forgiving your parents were, showing them these moves was the difference between a proclamation that video games were the work of Satan himself, or a laughable oh you style response. Either way, Mortal Kombat became a household name and has never left. Number 3, Soul Calibur. Sometimes all it takes to instigate the is this good for my child thought response is an image, which in the case of Soul Calibur was nearly always some of the most ridiculously over-sexualized characters in the history of gaming. Although the males are just as over-muscled and polished to a mirror sheen as the ladies, it's the inflato chests of characters like Ivy and Taki that turn heads whenever they're included in promotional material or just in-game. With bodies that better resemble blown-up sex dolls to the point of parody, even though the core fighting system that holds everything together is one of the best out there, part of why Soul Calibur never manages to hang with the heavyweights in the genre is somewhat down to this sleazy aesthetic. Number 2, Bully. Not since Mass Effect was labelled by Fox News as a sex simulator has a game been so thoroughly misrepresented by the mainstream press. Because, shock horror, Bully wasn't actually about making other people's lives a living hell. Regardless, this perception became the biggest factor mounted against Bully, and although the game was phenomenal and one of Rockstar's best, every screenshot or piece of footage did little to convince parent groups or news anchors otherwise. When hating on Bully became so damn popular, it twisted what was still just a video game into every parent's worst nightmare, regardless of whether they'd seen the final product or not. For those that did check it out, Jimmy Hopkins' interactions with other schoolchildren was the stuff of high school escapist fantasy, the likes of which we could only dream of or read about in comics. Only turning up for the classes that you wanted, fighting back against the jocks who insulted you from across the field, going after someone you're attracted to and them reciprocating. It was everything you loved about high school viewed through a cartoonified lens, and it was brilliant. And number one, Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball. We all knew when the Dead or Alive series began to be known for its busty ladies that it was going to be easy money should Tecmo ever decide to dedicate an entire game to gawping at them as much as possible. 
Many sequels later, it seems there's a huge amount of us that'll actually cough up the cash for such a game. But it didn't make for easy viewing should anybody, literally any other human ever, happen to be in the room. It is teenage boy fantasy demographic targeting at its finest, something Tecmo totally caught onto after two console versions of the game as well. As with the PSP only Dead or Alive Paradise, the minigames featured an increased amount of half-naked posing for you to take photos of. If ogling the baby-faced cast was one of the many reasons you got stuck into Dead or Alive in the first place, Tecmo only became more happy playing to that demographic. The worst of it though, charging $700 to get all the costumes in main game Dead or Alive 6. You've kind of only got yourselves to blame, but kind of also not. Anyway, that is my rundown of various video games I felt we all had to hide from our parents. Let me know your picks down in the comments below, and if you want to share some embarrassing stories, feel free. For now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com, and I'll catch you soon.